Hey everybody, it's Andrea, president and co-founder of the Stigma Free Society and also known as the Bipolar Babe. I am so nervous today. <laughs> I'm not usually nervous at all when it comes to public speaking or going live on an event. I'm usually completely fine. But today is so super important to me and our staff at the Stigma Free Society. And I just wanted to reach out to everybody out there to let them know about our newly launched today stigma free um, this toolkit. So it's called the Student Mental Health Toolkit. And it's going to be absolutely amazing to share this with you. I thought today what I could do is take a good half an hour of your time or even five minutes for you to stop in and to learn about this new toolkit what i can do is share my screen i just want to go through the main components there's a bunch of different sections registration login and the main page with the different um, landing pages where you can connect so i'm going to share my screen and talk to you about our new student mental health toolkit. First and foremost, um, before I start doing that, I would like to thank TELUS Victoria for giving us $10,000 toward this student toolkit. It's in its beginning stages. Uh, TELUS really believes in us. And so that money will go towards continuing to invest in the robust resource that it is. There's a lot more work to do. We're simply in pilot phase at this time, which is really exciting. And we really would appreciate your feedback. Also, United Way, Lower Mainland, thank you so much for the $50,000 that you initially gave to us uh, with COVID-19 setting in months ago. We were really worried about what was going to happen because a lot of uncertainty and um, unpredictability was happening at that time. I feel like we've really uh, made some opportunity out of this time during COVID, but you know, I really feel that things are uncertain, but we're doing good. We also had our fundraiser a few months ago and that really helped us get through as well. And we are coasting through just really looking for more funding and opportunities for people to invest in our toolkits across British Columbia. And eventually we would love to go national. That's the dream. Okay, so now I'm going to share my screen with you. So if you could just hold on momentarily and I will share the student mental health toolkit we have launched. Please do stay with me here instead of going to the site. It is live, however. Uh, studentmentalhealthtoolkit.com. Can you believe we actually got that beautiful URL? <laughs> so everything has been working out quite well. I would love to take you into the toolkit. At this place here on the landing page, you have teachers, school counselors, parents, guardians, and caregivers, and then young people, of course, youth grades four to seven, teens eight to 12. I feel like this resource is specifically really good for adults who are interacting with young people about their mental health and wanting to uh, really support them during this time with education. We are not a crisis intervention organization. We leave that to organizations such as the Kids Help Phone, who is one of our partners. BC211 is also really good for finding resources. So, excuse me, my nose is itchy. All right, so what I'm going to do is bring you into the toolkit on the main page. All of these go to the same toolkit on this side, but they go to different sections that are the most relevant for those people. So I'm just gonna go into the youth main homepage. And here we are at the student mental health toolkit for grades four to seven youth corner. 
If you scroll down here, when you first visit the toolkit, uh, you will be brought to a welcome message where I talk about the toolkit and its purpose, the who, what, why, when, where, why are we doing this? And what do we offer? We really hope that you will offer us back some feedback here because that would be amazing. We are always, always trying to improve what we do. And here it's the same exact thing and taking you to feedback. I would like to share with you the virtual stigma free school program initially. And the reason why I would like to do that is because we used to give in person presentations for 10 years. We have offered uh, other programs as well, but being in person for a presentation with young people. And as you can see on the screen, that's me at um, in, on Salt Spring. When all the schools got together, there were 600 people there. It was absolutely amazing. But now we have gone virtual. We can reach even more students, not just 600, 6,000, or even more. We reach one student with a message of hope, healing, and them reaching out for help then it's completely worth it. We explain here in the, in the introduction for the new virtual stigma-free society program, what this is about. Uh, we have this toolkit that offers a virtual stigma-free school program. All the information is stored in this one area. In this section, pre-documentary lesson plan about the virtual program and student activities at school. So you're probably wondering, okay, you used to go in and give in-person presentations. So what are you doing now? What we are doing is amazing because we have created a step-by-step -step educator's guide for this virtual presentation program. The presentation is now in documentary form. It is is an amazing thing to be able to capture every single thing that we talked about in our in-person presentations in documentary video form. So for instance, we always discussed introduction to mental health and stigma, talking about celebrities and examples of stigma. What are people thinking when it comes to mental health or other stigmas? We discussed this. We share personal stories, such as our co-founder and board chair, Dave Richardson, who shares very authentically about his depression and anxiety and how he deals with that on a daily basis and how he's gotten through. As well, former MLA Sam Sullivan to Lucas Gates, who identifies as being on the spectrum with autism, a Mac who identifies as being trans male, Mia, and all of these stories. Mia, for instance, what's so amazing about this is she has a mental illness called DID, dissociative identity disorder, which used to be referenced as split personality disorder. This is one of the most highly stigmatized mental illnesses, in my opinion. And Mia, 19 years old, talks about what it's like for her on a day-to-day -day basis to live with DID. It's not only fascinating, but it's inspiring and completely makes you feel hopeful that you can get through these things in life. And so on. So mental health education with Dr. Dana. Uh, Dr. Dana Wasserman is our amazing psychologist who volunteers with the Stigma Free Society. And my story as well, taking care of your mental health, how do you do that? And living stigma-free. We give you tips. And with our stigma-free tool and our stigma-free pledge, we want you to come to the Stigma-Free Society for all things elimination of stigma on mental health education. The one awesome thing about the virtual program is that now we have virtual Q&A presenters for this program. So you have the documentary in schools and the teacher can say, hey, we want something interactive. We want some sort of presentation. It's not going to be an hour of somebody like myself or uh, Lindsay, who's another presenter, just talking for an hour. It's not going to be that. 
but answering questions, facilitating conversation up to half an hour about the learnings in the documentary. We also have Maddie who has bipolar disorder and is our communications and project manager at the Stigma Free Society, who's absolutely amazing. As you can see here, we talk about the strength of our presenters, their topics of expertise and three ways to describe their talk. EJ Weston in Victoria, but now can present anywhere virtually, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, topics of expertise for EJ, living stigma-free, mental health, diversity, inclusion, accessibility, psychology, and addictions. Raman, who's our new intern, uh, absolutely fascinating, amazing woman. And we also have Cosette, who is our intern, both from Adler University. They are both studying in the area of psychology. Uh, I believe Cosette is actually doctorate level and Raman is doing her master's. We have Cam Webster, who has been a society presenter for so long, and he describes his journey with schizoaffective disorder, which is also a very highly stigmatized mental illness, mental illness, as many things are, obviously. But there are other mental illnesses I find, such as schizoaffective um, and DID. So we need to be aware of that and to be understanding of all mental illnesses, not just some of them. Uh, ben Garner, absolutely amazing, has a lot to talk about with his depression and bipolar disorder. He's engaging and very unique. We also have our full length stigma-free documentary. It's 5.0 minutes, almost an hour, but we prefer that schools take their time and spend time with all of the documentaries. They all make up the totality of the 50 minute documentary, but we love that this option is here to share stories, provide tips and everything we used to do in the schools, but now we are doing it virtually. Exciting times. And then you could go over to this menu and everything, every section is here. So we have downloadable resources and lesson plans, coping with mental health section, diversity and inclusion section, live wellness events, as many of you know that we host every single week with a minimum of three hosts a week, student activities, resources for parents, guardians and caregivers, a massive section that we have now, inspiring stories, tool, toolkit, video library, and help and resources. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the page with the sections. And as you can see here, the next one that I absolutely love is downloadable resources and lesson plans. As many of you know, we also have a stigma-free COVID-19 uh, youth wellness toolkit. This is very different. This is more robust. This is additional uh, dedicated content to just this toolkit. There's the odd thing that is similar, but we also really want to emphasize that this current toolkit is the best in schools and at home schooling. We understand parents may feel very lost during this time and teachers have often told me that they feel like they don't have the expertise to talk about mental health, which is why this resource is going to be absolutely amazing. These resources and lesson plans have been created with individuals with educational backgrounds and as well, Lindsay Henry, who is a youth uh, counselor in the schools for the S Surrey School District. It's all aligned with BC curriculum and I love what they have done. So we have a guide to your downloadable resources here. And as you can see, look at this. Oh my goodness, lesson plans, grades four to seven, downloadable resources and additional resources. So lesson plans, I shared this with a teacher and she told me she was absolutely floored that she could get everything in one place. So as a teacher, you do not have time to be searching around creating your own lesson plans for mental health. If you have a look here, we have done it for you. 
So it can go to subjects about talking to a trusted adult, how to manage through tough times, resiliency. That's really important. How to be resilient. Ten tips for taking care of your mental health. Taking a break from electronics. Tracking your mood and recognizing patterns. And it just goes on and on. We'll be adding new content every single week. So there'll never be a shortage of lesson plans or downloadable resources. Downloadable resources aren't specific to BC curriculum. They're resources that are very useful for school counselors. That's what I really see as a benefit to this toolkit. It's great for educators and school counselors who want to talk about different subjects with the youth and the students that come to them. I also find this very helpful for uh, parents, right? If they wanna talk about the importance of reaching out for help. Uh, true or false questions about mental health, because there's a lot of misinformation out there. All of our information has been vetted by professionals. Uh, Dr. Dana Wasserman, as I mentioned, is a psychologist. Uh, Dr. Chris Richardson, who is on our board of directors, and also is a research associate at UBC, has worked with us to help us on this toolkit. Uh, Maddie, who has an educational background, and Lindsay as well uh, as a PhD in exercise therapy and is an amazing individual who has made this really possible. Uh, I know there are a few others and I'll mention those in a minute. Mood tracker, 10 tips for coping with anxiety. So for instance, you can see here, we also have additional resources. We've partnered with We Matter and they have mini toolkits, uh, support worker toolkit, uh, from the Indigenous perspective. So we want to make sure that we are being inclusive and we thought that including We Matter in a significant way in our toolkits uh, with their blessing was really a great way to go about it. One thing I have to say, on the public toolkit that you will see without being registered into the toolkit itself, uh, you will get a taste of what these lesson plans are like. And you can see here, um, but not all of them are going to be available. You'll be getting this when you touch on certain parts of the toolkit, that, which means that you will need to register and become a member. And that could be for a school, an independent school, public school, uh, a school district. And even people at home, individuals, households who would like to be a part of that. And so I will share a little bit more about that in a minute. Okay. Now, for instance, I would like to go to the coping with mental health section. So empowering this toolkit, the images, it's so great. Thank you to Danielle Hobbs, who is our website developer extraordinaire. He's been with the society as our contracted website developer for 10 years. So you are so appreciated and so super talented. Mental illness education. This whole section is about dealing with mental health. And so we provide a lot of information and especially in a very visual way that is entertaining and nice to look at. So when this is in um, registered view, you'll be able to go through our tips for taking care of your mental health. As well, tips for encouraging good mental health while attending high school or middle school are illustrated animations are really fun and awesome. I highly suggest you do look at them. And we even have cartoons. Who has cartoons? This is great. Uh, Lindsay, who's our community development manager, she wrote all of these cartoons. Uh, she's very open about the fact that her son deals with anxiety and panic. And I thought, who would be a better person than to write about that for a cartoon? So this is a story of Amir, who has panic attacks and anxiety. And it is a story. And I really think everybody would really love to see it. 
We have the distress quiz, which is created by Dr. Dana Wasserman, psychologist in Vancouver. And again, Dr. Chris Richardson, who's a scientist and research associate at UBC taking this test. It's not about diagnosing. That's not what we're doing with this toolkit or elements of it. What we are doing is providing resources. And this distress quiz, for instance, is about measuring how your mental health is right now. And whether it the child or the teen is in a place where they need to reach out for help and something's wrong. Or are, is it just stress? So we have stress and we have distress really amazing quiz to help evaluate whether we should be getting more help than we have. Taking care of your mental health videos. There are so many from YouTube. There's a lot created out there that is actually really amazing. So we thought, why not showcase some of those amazing resources? Okay. Uh, diversibility and inclusion. Let's go here. We were contacted at the Stigma Free Society by an angry person. <laughs> and that was okay, because they said, you know, on your website, you don't really talk about autism. And my son is suffering at school. No one's including him. Why aren't you talking about this? And he was very passionate, but there, you could sense in the email even the anger. And I made sure that our staff got in touch with this person and letting them know that we are now talking about diversity and inclusion. We feel this is a very important topic to cover. Diversity is another word for disability. We don't like to use the word disability, but it's okay if other people do. Uh, we have been in contact with Inclusion BC and Autism BC really, really significantly. And our resources have even been looked over by Inclusion BC and approved and supported. So we again have our comics and our inclusion checklist, which everybody can go through just by clicking. Uh, when you have registered access. Conversation cards. These are live. These are public. This is for everybody to use. What does diversity mean? So it's a replacement word for disability. Like I said, we focus on what people can do, not what people can't do. And so that is why that we are um, doing this right now. So it's also important to talk about you know, sensory diverse abilities versus what is learning diverse abilities, physical. So there's so much to learn with young people. And even for ourselves, as um, when somebody is a parent, a school counselor, or whoever just wants to educate themselves on this topic. We even have links, which are very helpful related to, to diverse ability. And videos as well. All of this is open to the public view. So pretty exciting. It's a whole new area that we're exploring in a really meaningful way. And I'm really proud of us for doing that because honestly, we weren't and we're all about improving and admitting that we need to do more. Live wellness events. All right, yours truly does some interviewing with some experts and amazing people. Dr. Daniel Toe uh, had like a panel today of like a psychologist and people from the Surrey School District. And thank you so much, Daniel, for all you do. Uh, Lindsay Henry will be leaving us. She's the youth counselor, Surrey School District, only in the capacity as a host. She's been with us for six months and helps us with our lesson plans and drafting and creating those amazing resources. Uh, Lindsay's leaving. She's going to be a mom. So she has a lot going on and she's a school counselor. Nisha Kare, uh, wellness chats with Nisha. Really awesome. We are booked all the way into December. If you feel you know someone or you are someone who would like to be interviewed, an expert in your field or somebody with lived experience, please contact us. And Lindsay Goulet, exercise physiologist and PhD. Every second week, Lindsay will do workouts on the Stigma Free Facebook page. 
Okay, there's so much to go through and it's a good thing. I just have about five, maybe 10 minutes if I'm lucky. All right, there is a lot to go through. Student activities. And we'll go through here. Student activities. So remember, this is just the youth side. There's the teen side as well, where everything is replicated, but age appropriate and then changed. So some of the things will transfer over to teens and then be in youth. However, everything is age appropriate. Uh, youth activities at home, illustrated animation, really fun. We have an activity generator. Uh, show me something to do, take five deep breaths, or show me something else to do while I'm, while I'm at home, challenge, learn something new today. So there's just a lot of ideas that are age appropriate for young people. Uh, youth activities, and we talk about youth activities in school, and youth activities at home. So that is a resource. Everything is in printable version, which is really great. Take the mental health true or false quiz, and this will give people information about facts around mental health in a fun way. So you get to take a quiz and then it tells you whether you're right or wrong and gives you that answer that you need. This is something that Lindsay Henry and with the uh, design skills of Maddie created the mental health situation shifter. And you go through and it's basically like a comic book. And it talks about like youth appro approaching one subject, situation, one way. And then what's another way to look at it? Because we could always be positive or we could be negative. And so this is just a whole little booklet, which is really useful for parents, school counselors, educators to talk about how we can approach things in a different way, maybe a way that would be more useful and productive or positive. We have mental health in the classroom activities, as I mentioned, conversation cards here as well, stigma-free tools. The stigma-free tools are our traditional tool, which is like a, uh, like a type of quiz that evaluates how, how stigma-free are you already being and ways to perhaps cultivate that way of life. Taking the stigma-free pledge as well. And we have created conversation cards here for whomever would like to talk to young people, whether it's parents, guardians, uh, caregivers, educators, school counselors, youth themselves, to further talk about each of these tools. All right, and now? <laughs> oh yes resources for parents guardians and caregivers this is a really beautiful section that I love very much because obviously times are really challenging right now especially at home for a lot of families and we just wanted to provide a place where uh, parents could get the help that they need, not through a crisis intervention kind of way, but in an educational way. So with this intro video, it talks about how hard it can be to be a parent and how to get help for your young person, if they, your child, if they think they have a mental illness or mental health concerns. Uh, Lindsay Goulet, who's also a mom uh, of two amazing kids, really is responsible for creating 90% of this entire section. And section one, talking to your youth about mental health, getting your child professional help. Your child's been diagnosed. Now what do you do? Different sections will take you into different places and give you more information. We've also partnered, partnered with uh, Kel Kelty Mental Health, their podcast is amazing for parents, guardians, and caregivers, especially during this tough time, all about mental health and parents and perspectives and doctors, which is what we need to be hearing about right now. We have our conversation cards, again, for parents to ask their youth, their children. We call it real talk. And also, um, we have helpful links 
about mental health, well-being for the government to Anxiety Canada, all Foundry, all these amazing resources in one place. It is so difficult when parents are trying to find a way to help their young person, their child, and they don't know where to go. So you can come here. Videos for parents, guardians, and caregivers. This page is all public. You do not need a registration to view this page. I feel for our parents, guardians, and caregivers, um, we just wanna make this totally 100% accessible and we hope you'll contact us for further access to the entire toolkit. Inspiring stories, one of my favorite sections, which I love so much. It's inspiring stories. Mia is here talking about her personal experience, as I said, with dissociative identity disorder. Uh, many of these are open for the public view, like all of these stories. We call them our uh, stigma-free warriors. And as you can see, we have a lot of people submitting a lot of stories. Some of the content will be locked. Uh, we want you to share your story in a two to three minute video talking about maybe some challenges you have. You don't have to have a mental illness, but maybe you face some mental health challenges. Maybe you have some inspiring words for people. And we have Owen's story. He is our champion, Lindsay Goulet's son. And he works with Buddy Check, who's an amazing organization. Dave Richardson, again, our um, amazing co-founder and chair of the Stigma Free Society, sharing his story and all the individual stories. So in the virtual program, we use a lot of these stories within that program. And we just want to ensure that everybody is hearing this inspiration. These people have overcome such great challenges and at the Stigma Free Society, we just wanted to make sure that you could hear them. The toolkit, the video library toolkit. Okay, toolkit video library, sorry. This is the hub. This is where everything is stored. So if you're like, I saw this video on the toolkit, it's Mia. I think it's here, I can't find it. Everything is stored in this one place. So you start off with the welcome message and then you will have the illustrated animations, every illustrated animation on the site, the storyboard that was on the parent section. Many of these are public. Some of them you need registration status, water intake. That's about our tips for mental health. Again, Dave. So this is where every single video is stored in a hub, which I thought was a really good idea. And that way nothing gets lost and everybody can always find whatever they're looking for. And it goes on quite a, quite a, yeah, quite a way down. With the Stigma Free Society, we feel it's really important to keep things simple we have found that one of the best ways to reach out when it comes to suicide ideation or people who are um, who may hurt themselves is the support line. And as well, if friends or family fear that the person is going to hurt themselves, then they do call 911 when they think they need to do that. As well, Kids Help Phone is really an amazing partner. BC211, as I mentioned, finding services in your area. We also have crisis lines, Options BC, Vancouver Island cross Crisis, HealthLink, but we don't have much more than this at the moment because we feel we want to keep it simple, centralized, and useful. And we don't want to overcrowd the page and overwhelm you with too many places to reach out. We feel this is a good start. All right, so I'm just gonna go back here. You're probably wondering, okay, what does it mean to register? The reason why we're doing this instead of just making it completely open to the public is we want to engage 
uh, schools, public schools, school districts, uh, and of course, independent schools and households as well. So if you just click on register, it gives you all the information on how you be can become a member and have full access to this toolkit. And you register now, and this is information about the virtual stigma-free program. We at the Stigma Free Society do not require a donation of any kind to access our toolkit, not anything. We do have suggested donations if public schools or independent schools or public school districts would like to host our presentations. The toolkit is merely an amazing bonus. So what that means is when, if you know, you're a district or a school and you want our virtual Q&A assistants or presenters, as I call them, to zoom in or to Teams in, Microsoft Teams, then we're able to do that. That is what a donation is towards, is the human resources, is the costs that come with running such a program. And here on the registration page, you will see what your donation is for. Program development, delivery, notably the presenters as they need to be paid to be able to show up to offer this amazing service. Helping the Stigma Free Society during COVID-19 as it is a tough time. We need to market and promote and we always have to engage experts in different areas to ensure that we are putting out the most accurate content. If a school or district cannot afford to pay anything, then that's fine. We will accept free access, but you would need to contact us. And when you contact us, it just simply uh, brings you to the Stigma Free Society main page and you can contact us and then register. I'm really excited about this, so amazing. We're just starting off with this new strategy, this whole, um, you know, asking schools and districts if they want to donate, that would be amazing, but it isn't necessary and we completely understand, especially for households, if they wanna make a donation of any kind, $5 or, or nothing, it's totally fine. We just wanna ensure people have our toolkit but for schools to have our virtual presenters come in and engage students in an interactive way and then get the toolkit as an extra free bonus. Win-win. And I guess that sums up my presentation. When you come to the register link, uh, Maddie has put on here an amazing tour of the mental health toolkit and as well up here, um, the sneak peek of the virtual stigma free school program. So the school program, again, this is where we used to be in person. And now we can be anywhere. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Thank you, everybody. This has been an amazing opportunity. I just can't tell you how passionate I am about my work. And the reason being has been the support of everybody out there, especially our young people and our school staff. And I'm very humbled and I'm very grateful. So the toolkit has been a work in progress for months and we are happy to release it today please contact me contact our staff you just go to stigmafreesociety.com there's a contact tab for more information write us through facebook instagram whichever we are here for you and we will be promoting this on an ongoing basis so school counselors educators youth parents, guardians, and caregivers, please use our resource because right now mental health is one of the most important concerns during the pandemic. And we're here for you. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day.